this is me on May 8th, 2006. A day that I didn't know at the time would change my life. When I look back, I see a lost, confused little girl. A girl who didn't know half of what was yet to come. A girl who's not grateful, but still a little confused. A girl who looks to the future, but never forgets about where she came from. A girl who's grateful for who she is, where she is, and what she is, but still doesn't know why she is. A girl who's thankful for her birth parents, and even more grateful to her adoptive parents. Because frankly, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to make this beautiful thing we call art. So thank you for always letting me be me, for letting me express myself through clothes, words, and art. If it wasn't for you, I would never have been able to look like this, or this. Thank you most of all for introducing me to this crazy thing called life. I would let them know that your parents have no idea what you're asking them. Well, not scripted in the least. Oh yeah, this is totally unscripted. I don't know how to start it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, I think. I'm... Good morning. <laughs> Get me <a> coffee. <laughs> I'm Lynn. I'm Donna. Emily's mom. Yes. Emily's dad. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna talk about like adoption and like your adoption process and like you know the whole shebang and all the burning questions my heart has had. <laughs> There's not many, so don't worry. Don't worry. So I just want to know first, like, why did you decide to adopt? That's my first question. <laughs> That's a pretty easy baseline, like. <laughs> Well, we wanted children. I thought we'd get pregnant. It didn't work out. Okay, you see, that was, my, that was my other question. <laughs> was it like something that was always on your radar? Oh, it was, it was already on the radar. Yeah, I would say. And my, at least on my radar. Adoption wasn't necessarily, you know, you yeah, like want to go there first. It's just mm -hmm. like that's next natural progression and, you know, a very, you know, viable. Mm-hmm. So why China? We had heard that in China that the children were truly abandoned and truly no one knew who their parents were. Mm -hmm. So to us, that seems a little bit selfish, but that was what we wanted. We yeah. wanted for no one to come back later and say, you know, we want this child. Although now that we oh, so through like it, now that leads me to another question. So like, mm -hmm. if I do find my adopted parents, like, we would, would you? We would be so yeah. happy. Okay. We would be elated. We would do anything we could to help you go through that process. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. But at the time, we just felt, you know, yeah, I, like somebody mm -hmm. would take you away from us. The Chinese adoption seemed very clear cut, and it, it just seemed like the right thing to do. So like, they show you the kid right before you. Oh, Go there, yeah. right? Yeah. What did you yeah. think when you first saw me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, they don't do you any justice. Um, the picture that they send, it's as if it's mostly white. It's you know, very blurry. It's overexposed, uh, okay. way overexposed. You, you have nothing but eyes and mouth and two little dots for nose <laughs> and, and black hairs. How can you in the picture she doesn't look like this? Uh, well, it, her hair's been up like that all day. It'll lay back down after you wash it the next day. And since the hair bows have been in there all day, it kind of made wrinkles in her hair. Let me see. You try. Yeah, she liked it. Yeah. Can I do something like this? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I remember going to school the next day, taking Leanne to school, and we had taken that little tiny overexposed picture and blew it up to the five by seven and copied it and showed it to everybody at the school that this is our new daughter that's Ooh. coming. Like talking about like getting to China, what was like, what were your feelings during 
like the adoption day. Well, you know, we had um, gotten in touch with some families who had been to the orphanage where you were. And so they had met you, and they had sent us pictures of you, and they had told us about you. So now at this point, we've seen who you really are, mm -hmm. and um, how, and we found out how active you were, and they were like, she likes balls, and she likes cameras, and so we packed this bag full of things that, because we realized you being a little bit older, you were almost three, that you were not going to be too happy about what was yeah. going on. When I was like, I guess kind of reluctant to like go over to you guys, mm -hmm. like how did that make you feel? That, yeah, you like expected, expected it? Yeah, expected yeah you expected it. it. So yeah. did it like hurt you or anything? No. no. Okay. We, we were happy to know that you liked the people you were living with. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then we knew you knew how to love somebody. You knew how to mm -hmm. care about somebody. You felt attached to somebody. So that was really good for us to see that you liked those people. Mm -hmm. And so then the next question is, have you ever felt or like, did you like think you wouldn't like love us as much as like maybe like your own children? Oh yeah. No. Really? No. no. But like never crossed your mind? That's why I didn't. <laughs> You're a <bleep>. <laughs> 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 You're okay. I'm like sorry. <laughs> Here, get some tissue and be back. But no, when you know when you adopt a child and you bring them into your home, your home is your little cocoon, mm -hmm. and it's as if there is no difference. You don't know any difference. Um, the only time you feel different is when you leave your home. Yeah, you leave you your little cocoon. Out. You go out and people realize that you look a little bit different. Yeah. But in your home, it's your child. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. We might, we didn't start from the beginning with you, yeah. but we started from where we were and we worked on, you know, how to become your parents and how to love you and how to get you to like us. When I give my love, it's forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's forever. Mm -hmm. You never felt like uh, the bond was different than... No. Uh, oh, felt like it was a little harder to grasp. I mean, you don't immediately become bonded. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a, a lot of work. There was a big language barrier. But I will say, there was a, a definite moment between when we met you and you were with the people from the orphanage that knew you and we saw you all happy and animated and we saw who you really were. Mm -hmm. And then they left. Mm -hmm. And you cried violently. And you cried for those people and that yeah. did hurt. Yeah. You know, because they were leaving and you were crying for them. And I didn't even know what you were saying, but I knew you were crying for them because I heard you calling for the little girl. Mm -hmm. But you cried and cried, and I just kept holding on to you. I just like, this is it. This is it. <laughs> yeah. I will help you know help you make it through this, no matter what. And um, even somebody else in the room who was from another orphanage, a director from another orphanage, mm -hmm. came to me while you were crying, and he said, "No, let her go. Chinese children don't like to be held." And I thought, "You're wrong." <laughs> <laughs> and I just walked away, and I kept holding you. And after a little while, you you calmed down and you went to sleep and you fell asleep and you probably stayed asleep for 30 minutes or more. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I just kept and holding it was okay. you. And then when you woke up, you looked around and it was as if everything had changed. Mm -hmm. You were able to look at us and interact with us. Of course, you couldn't talk. Everything was different, but yeah, there, that was a, a big moment of change. And w one thing I'd like to say is like a lot of times being an adopted family, you know, is different in some respects because this was preconceived, planned. We wanted you, we're ready. And finally, what would you say to like anyone thinking about adopting? 
underscore. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, it's a, uh, an amazing way to do it. You know, I, I don't think specifically China is a problem, but you know, it's not a problem of the you know. You look different, things like that. One thing that was so striking, the number of people that would come up to me and say, oh, I'm adopted, or my kids are adopted. And people I've known for years, I'm like, well, I'm adopted, you know. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Adoption's you know, kind of a neat process. Mm -hmm. You got some people that want kids, and you got kids that <laughs> want family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but also I'd have to say, and a little plug for the agency that we used, um, CCAI, they're a very clean cut agency. And they not only adopt children from China now, but they've gone all over all the world, world and they adopt children from all over the world. Their mission is good, their heart is good, and they're, they're doing it all for the right reasons. Thank you guys for like loving me bring you into my, you know. Yeah, well, yeah well. you know, I could still be a China, you know, all of I don't know doing what, but yeah. So, well, or you, you could have been adopted by another family. Yeah, but it was adopted by really you guys, so. We're just really thankful that you came to us, you know. I, and we, you know, the matching room, um, you do sort of feel like God has his hand in this the whole time. I feel like God directed us to do this and then help direct you to us mm -hmm. and us to you. Love you back. Love you. See, that wasn't that hard. No, that was that easy, that you know. <laughs> Have you ever felt like we're not, like our bond is any different because we're not blood related? No. Yeah, my nerves. <laughs> Do you feel like a part of the Asian culture? Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I did Chinese dance thanks to the mom. And I was put in that. I did like Chinese New Year, the Dragon Ball Festival. Do you feel more white or like Asian? Or do you just feel like yourself? Myself. I mean, I went to white. I mean, that's just yeah. not here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the same way. I just feel kind of like myself, like not, a, like almost like not a part of like any culture almost. Yeah, like I'm more at home, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I don't think about it that much. But there are times when it is kind of like... When people stare though, or you're like, oh. <laughs> when people, have you, do you get like the typical Asian stereotypes a lot? Yeah, like you're good at math and all that. Mm -hmm. I get that. Not necessarily, so I just... I applied myself to it. Yeah. I, I worked for for my grade. I didn't I didn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And do you remember like anything from my adoption process? You stole my bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that video. Oh my god, that was funny. Are you so uh, salty about that? Uh, well, you like taking pictures and seeing the end product, especially yourself. <laughs> Not much has changed, obviously, I guess. Have you ever, like, wondered if mom and dad wouldn't love us the same, like, as their own children? If, like, not, but I mean, we are, their, that was really bad, but, like, you know, like a biological child. Um, uh, no. That's never, like, crossed your mind? I mean, it's crossed it, but I mean, look at what mom and dad do for us. Does it hurt you at all that, like, maybe, like, you were, like, maybe unwanted, or? I mean, I guess, but I mean, I ended up with mom and dad. So, so it, yeah, it all ended up okay. Okay, well, thank you. Have fun in college. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Adios. Dear sister. I don't think I've ever actually told you this, but thanks for always being there for me no matter what I looked like, treated you like, or even when I annoyed the bejesus out of you. Thank you most of all for immediately taking me under your wing and showing me how to love someone unconditionally. XO, XO.
if you've made it to this far in the video then you probably know more about me than most of the people in my life <laughs> and um yeah so I just wanted to like wrap up the video I didn't want to leave you hand not handing I didn't want to leave you guys hanging first I want to say I'm really proud of about being adopted and it's something that I think is so cool especially just I think it's such a unique experience like not experience well experience but also just a unique story for me and I'm so grateful for my parents my birth parents like I said I'm so grateful for everyone who made my adoption story what it is today 
it's probably the best thing that happened like has ever happened to me but with that being said i'm not gonna sit here and say there hasn't been times when i felt like it's like been a it's been a process you know so that's kind of what i just wanted to end on and just talk about so this is it well this yeah <laughs> I learned a lot of things putting together this video that I didn't even know. I knew I was shy and like timid in the beginning obviously because it's like a new environment but just how quickly like I grew to love my parents and like grew to love my family is just so amazing to me and such like a testament to their love. It's also just showing if you love someone open heartedly you fully accept them and love them then they'll accept that love and especially as kids so i just think that was so cool for me just watching those videos because i haven't seen those home videos in so long just watching those home videos and just seeing how like the first few days i was so timid and then by the end of the trip i was just like full on in in their family which is so amazing if anyone's thought that was a problem i think if you fully go in with your full heart then it's not a problem but with that being said there hasn't there has been times when um i like i i'd hate to say like ashamed because i don't ever feel like i've been ashamed of being adopted but i think on the exterior because we just all we all want to fit in like it's just like it's human nature everyone wants to fit in everyone wants to feel accepted as much as it's kind of like oh like you know because there are so many opportunities that we miss for trying to feel accepted trying to fit in trying to be like everyone else when we really truthfully don't need to be like everyone else and shouldn't but um i just wanted to talk about some of those times so obviously like my parents said they didn't weren't able to have kids because they were a little bit older they got married older and that's like the case for like a lot of adopted families and so that's something that's really come up for me like i remember sitting at in the cafeteria when i cafeteria cafeteria when i was like in first grade and just remembering like talking to my friends i don't know how it got brought up but everyone was talking about like how like how old their parents were and i sat there and i lied to them and i was like I can't remember I either made up like I didn't know or like I made up some false like younger age because I was like kind of, I was embarrassed I didn't want to be singled out for having like the older parents you know so I like and that's happened a few times and also the same thing I do remember times in my life I would try to hide the fact that they were my parents because I don't know it just it always brings up more questions where someone is always like, oh, then like, you know, were you not loved? Like those times when I would kind of almost like disown them almost. And I hate to even say that word because like that's a very strong word. Even that day, I felt so ashamed of myself and like guilty because I kind of just like almost disowned the people that brought me into their life and loved me and like loved me unconditionally it's something that i feel like every adopted kid goes through i mean like not even if you're older like you know um not if your parents are older or anything it's just like something that it's almost like you don't want more questions being asked and so that's something i've like struggled with i've grown to love it but when i was younger like it was kind of a thing where it's like i kind of did feel like different for having older parents so that's something and like i mean i had remarks about like my parents like oh is that like your grandparent or something even that says like i knew it wasn't true and i knew i still loved them but like it's still kind of like does like i don't know it just makes you feel like uncomfortable i want to tell my parents that i've never felt like you know i've never felt that i never wanted to be here like i always wanted to be with them i've never felt that um i'd rather be in china or i'd rather be somewhere else or i'd rather have not been adopted or like i'd rather have just like a regular family because i think regular is boring but um there have been times where yeah like i feel like i'm just i think it's human nature but it's also just part of being adopted that you are going to feel those feelings but it's okay to feel those feelings because those are just human feelings I feel like there's a negative stereotype about being adopted almost in like other people's eyes I can't remember like the countless times when like someone's been like oh like your parents like abandoned you like abandoned you like do you feel like sad or like mad about them or are you like angry with them 
and I've always said no I think my life is probably better than it th like with the people I'm with than if I was somewhere like if I was with someone who I don't know couldn't take care of me couldn't love me couldn't who knows like the reason why and no hate or shame or anything to my biological parents like I said I'm grateful for them and also I think adoption isn't a negative thing I think it's all it's a circle of love because just imagine like having a child and knowing that you can't take care of them or like the single child policy knowing that there's no way you can legally have this kid or anything and having to give them up like that it takes a lot of love and I think it's something and who knows maybe they didn't want me and like I'm okay with that but I like to think like in my mind that you know that's why and I think it's a full circle of love because also then your parents who adopted you they wanted you so it's like a circle of love you know and there's always like different circumstances and I think specifically in China there's a different like circumstance with a single child policy and all that but um, just for my circumstance, I think that's how I like to view it. I still do get uncomfortable with talking about adoption and like if someone comes up to me, I like I always want to end it as soon as possible, which is really ironic because I just made a 30 minute video pouring my heart out. This video in a sense though is like everything I've wanted to say to these people all my life. Because I am like, I am a shy person. I don't... I don't like I don't love talking about myself it's not my favorite thing to do which is another thing that's really ironic because I made a YouTube channel so I, <laughs> I wish I could fully and I I'm getting there like I'm like not close because I don't think anyone's close to ever figuring out who they really are but I feel like I am getting there and like fully accepting myself and I think that's something that's just like not even adoption or anything just everyone is so important and something that is like you have to accept yourself and you have to accept your story and everyone has a different story and that's what makes people unique and being unique is amazing and I think in a sense like everyone wants to be unique but everyone doesn't want to be unique it's like everyone hates being different but everyone loves being different it's kind of like it's not like really like it doesn't go hand in hand but being different is so important because one of my favorite quotes is like, there is no one, there's no one like you, there will never be anyone like you, and there was no one like you. Basically meaning, you're the only person that will ever exist, like yourself. Completely yourself, no one will ever look like you, you could have a doppelganger, which is kind of weird, like that's really creepy. But, um, you're never, no one's gonna be exactly like you, so you might as well embrace yourself and be you. Don't try, like, don't spend your whole life trying to be someone else, because it's just, it's a waste of time, and accept yourself, live your truth, and I think that's something that I need to do, I think that's someone, and obviously, like, I haven't found that, but I think just accepting adoption and my adoption story is something that really is a big part of that. I think the hardest part of adoption for me, personally, was, is, is, just like the cultural aspect because it is it's really weird and it's like I mean it might be different for like if you're like adopted to a white family and you're white but then even white is like there's so many different types of white but for me personally so I was adopted to a white family it kind of makes it kind of culturally confusing because you look Asian and you look Chinese I look Chinese but I I will I've never felt Chinese and I've always felt because like I didn't grow up in the culture so you can't feel like something that you've never been you know but the problem is like people just like assume it because like you look like it I honestly thought I was white probably the first 10 years of my life <laughs> like I mean like I literally probably thought I was white for the first 10 years of my life and um like subconsciously obviously like I knew I wasn't like on the surface level that's kind of how I felt and like I remember in first grade like getting like or maybe not first grade or something, but like the standardized test, they bubble it in and they like bubble in like your race for you and they bubbled in Asian. I was like, and I, it like, it didn't quite like comprehend with me because I, I felt white. 
And also, like, when you're little, you don't see color as much, I don't feel like. So, it wasn't as big of a deal. But especially, I think it became more into, like, the forefront when I was late elementary, probably, like, middle school. People would start, like, like, you know, saying those, like, racial stereotypical, like, things for Asians. Like, oh, like, you, like, should have gotten a really good grade on your test. Because, like, your math test, because, like, all Asians are smart at math or, like, smart at that was not how you word that or like you know like the typical like eye comment or um just like honestly like any asian stereotype i've probably heard at least once or twice in my life which is something that like kind of made me confused because i was just like i don't feel asian like i don't feel these stereotypes but i look asian so people automatically assume you know like but I never grew up in the culture. It did cause like a lot of cultural confusion. Oh, talking about Asian stereotypes, I will say I always like deal with Asian stereotypes. Like I joke, I like feed into the joke, which now I realize is so bad because you're almost like condoning that, which is not good because um, that's not really okay to say to someone. And I hate to say this, but like for me, like I brush things off probably way easier than I should. Like I don't take things very literally most of the time, which is probably not a good thing because I feel like I probably get walked on a little too much. So it doesn't like almost affect me, but like now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like it has affected me in some ways because it does make me like subconscious of some things. Like my eyes sometimes when I'm like smiling in a photo, I'm always like, okay, big eyes, big eyes or something like that. So, um, I think that's not okay and that's something I still need to work on because like I still feed into that and I still like joke like make Asian jokes all the time and I think it's like almost like a wall I built up around myself <laughs> you know like to try to like just like say that's okay but it's not okay. When I was little my family would they would take us to like Chinese festivals and they still do like they still do. But, like I said, I never felt like a part of the Asian culture. I would always feel like so out of place when I went to those and it would almost feel like a chore for me, which I hate and I wish I, and I wish I would have taken full advantage of those things when I was little and if you're adopted or if you're an adoptive parent, definitely try to introduce your culture, like introduce the culture that your child is from or you're from and like try to absorb it because I wish I would have like tried to learn Chinese when my like mom gave me like a silver platter to learn it on but I didn't so also at the same time don't like force it onto them because they'll come back to it because now I wish I would have known and now I'm trying to learn because it is like a part of me even if it's like not but then I don't really feel white either because I mean um even when I get together with my family, like my mom's side of the family, like I'm the only Asian besides my sister, so I still feel really out of place and I still don't really feel a part of that either. You're kind of just yourself, which now I'm really appreciative of and like I feel like I've accepted that I'm just me. I'm like the girl who literally does not know who she is, like has no idea like what culture she really fits into. Which I think is okay, and I think it's also allowed me to be like a part of every culture. I feel like I can appreciate every culture, which I think is really cool. That's the biggest, hardest part about being adopted for me. And I think for most Asian adoptees probably too. It's just, cause it's just hard. Cause it's like, are you white? Are you Asian? Are you, what, like, what are you? Like, and I mean, obviously I put down like for like those tests and for everything I'm Asian because I am Asian. I'm like 99.1% Chinese. So I am Asian, but I've never felt Asian and I still don't feel Asian. And I don't think I will ever feel Asian. But I will say something that I've loved and I've something I've loved, loved experiencing is like in the past year, I've definitely learned more about the Asian culture and like, and like felt proud of the Asian culture, which I think is the first time I've ever really felt proud of it and felt proud of being Asian almost, which is like so like insane. Like, I don't know, I almost like teared up. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I was even watching like this YouTuber's video and she was saying like how the first time she felt proud of being Asian was like when she watched K-pop and I kind of like relate because um, uh, Oh my god, why am I forgetting their name? Oh, Blackpink. So I feel like it's kind of like the same thing with Blackpink I think it's like which is a K-pop girl group and they're like huge right now 
and like I love them I think they're awesome and, like so cool but I think for the really like why I like them why I gravitated towards them was one it was like the first Asian artist I've ever seen but it also was like these four like dope girls like four dope Asian girls like taking over the world having fans all around the world everyone loves them and I think that's just like goes back to like representation. I didn't even know there were Asian artists, which is like the dumbest thing to say. Obviously there were Asian artists, but I didn't know any of them, so I didn't know, you know? But now I know so many, I know so many influencers. I think that's something that like really has helped me and like felt more, even though I'm not like that, I don't know them or like that's not really the Asian culture, but it's like some part of it. I think when you feel represented and you feel like, and you see someone who's gone mainstream that looks like you, and like is being accepted widely it almost makes you feel like oh okay i'm gonna feel more accepted everywhere i go to and like the thing with holly like in hollywood where like crazy rich asian has come out i see so many more asian actors than i have in like the past who knows how long in this past year and i've seen um, the new mulan movies coming out so i just think like that representation like i said is so powerful and i think it's something that needs to be done more of and I think it's getting there for Asians. Five years ago, I didn't see any of that. I didn't see any Asian girl. Like now I see in like Vogue and like all like the high fashion campaigns, which I like, I love fashion. So just seeing like Asian models up there too, is just like so cool. Cause it's like, oh, these people like look like me, you know? And like the first time I've seen like people with like the same eyes as me. Another thing I love about like the adopted, being adopted is like the community you have. Like my family's best friends are like someone they met adopting my sister and also like there's so many cool camps like i'm going to a camp it's called art camp china and i'm going to be a counselor and um i also my mom's co-worker's daughter she is um she's adopted and like we're like best friends like me and her are tight so yeah she's like my favorite little kid ever and also um even like the k-pop thing like that kind of like built a community like an asian community that i've always like kind of wanted oh adopt teen is another really good one it's like a camp and also they have like hangouts all over the city like all over different cities which is really nice i think i talked way too long so i'm gonna go right now and i hope you, i hope this video maybe touched you maybe i don't know if you made it through the whole thing because it's a long video and um thanks for watching i think this was like i don't know this was really good for me this was like therapy it was like getting all my feelings out letting me express myself which was like i think it was good and i think adoption is something like i really want to like try to like promote and i think it is like promoted pretty well like i mean i know a lot of people are adopted now and i think it's like something that i've noticed a lot more i hope you may be related to this video maybe 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 not. I don't know. Maybe you learned something new. Maybe you didn't. Okay. Peace out, Boy Scouts.